Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we've got a really exciting test coming up. So we'll be testing Windows Defender, the latest version with Windows 10, against a host of dangerous ransomware. Of course, all of this will be done inside a virtual machine and will be automated using my usual tool called Malix. In this folder, we've got 54 items. All of these are ransomware variants. There are a couple of new ones, but most of these have been known for months or even years now. In order to make this test even more interesting, we're going to do this two ways. Now, we all know that Windows Defender relies heavily on its cloud infrastructure. So I want to see, first of all, what it's going to detect with the help of the cloud. And second, we're going to disable internet on the VM and then we're going to try running the same files and we'll see if the detection rate changes if it cannot access the internet. Anything that is missed is going to destroy our data. Make no mistake about it. First, we're going to do the test with internet turned on as usual. We're going to load up the VM and go to the snapshot which has Windows Defender turned on and updated. I'm going to show you that it is indeed the case that we have verse and threat protection turned on and now we can load up powershell and begin our attack process now keep in mind i'm not going to disable windows defender at any stage of the test we're going to replicate a network attack vector so all the files are located in a shared folder which is over the network so is the tool all of this will be executed directly from the network location which is z think of this as a typical enterprise attack vector situation where you've got some computer in the network which has been remotely accessed and then it's trying to execute malware on this host. Now that our script is ready we just have to say that we do indeed have real-time protection turned on and let the task begin. We're sitting at around 80% detection right now. It's jumping up to 90%. I do expect a fairly high number. The network is completely enabled right now, so Windows has direct access to its cloud. Most of these are being blocked, as you would expect, but I do see some changes on the desktop, so that doesn't look too good. And now this window popping up. Well, our files may not be safe after all even with network enabled. This is definitely an interesting result because I would have guessed that with the help of the cloud it would have been able to detect all these files given that they're fairly old. The test is complete. We've got a detection ratio of 96.3% proactive, two misses, and it took under a minute. Now let's check our documents. Ooh, <laughs> looks like um, Windows Explorer shortcuts have been deleted. This is some of the mischief that ransomware typically does. Let's try and access it a different way. And indeed, it does look like our data is encrypted. If I open this using Notepad, yeah, good luck translating that. Now, if we take a look at pictures, it's the same story. Looks like the culprit was ACO ransomware, so it's one of the relatively new ones that was in the folder. But from the extension, I have a suspicion that Crypt ransomware did execute as well. So if we scroll back up, we should be able to find the two threats that did manage to execute successfully. And there you go, that is indeed the case. So we have crypt.ransom.exe, this one was missed, and so was ACO. That's the first part of the test complete. As you can see, our system is compromised. Now, I would like to add that I didn't have any of these folders added as protected folders, in which case programs cannot access them. But again, that comes with pros and cons because even legitimate programs have trouble accessing protected folders. So it's very likely that on your system you will have a lot of locations which are not protected folders and where there is some data that is of value, especially if it's an enterprise. If this was, say, a real-world attack, the only option we'd have right now is to restore from backup. So head back to the snapshot and let's try out the second scenario, which is with the internet turned off for the VM. I'm going to quickly go into my firewall settings and start a network lockdown. And I'm also going to check the folder in case, yeah, as I expected, there have been some modifications in the network location as well. So I'm going to delete these new files and we'll grab Malix again. The folder seems untouched, so we can continue with that. So all I have to do is essentially copy Malix to the shared folder and we're good to go. 
Now I will just demonstrate that we have disabled internet on the VM. As you can see, the web page isn't loading, it's taking forever, and we will repeat the test. The same network location, the same attack vector, and real-time protection is still turned on. I can show you that right now. We didn't mess with the VM, so this bit is a bit obvious, but I still do it. And now the test begins, and echo is missed as usual, no surprises there. It wasn't even detected with the network enabled. Now let's see if we have any further misses because of this impairment that we've added. Looks like that indeed is the case. We've got... Ouch! <laughs> F Society ransomware just taking over the screen. We've definitely got more stuff executing now. And we're only at 33%, so it looks like things are going to get worse. And wow, it looks like PowerShell is glitching out. I'm not sure what is going on, but this is interesting to watch. This is something that I find really entertaining about doing tests. You always have something unexpected happen. Like, I have no clue what is happening right now. With all the numbers being printed on the screen, and now we've got... It looks like another ransomware with a fake update window. And now... Shell Locker has taken over the screen as well. Let's see if we can rescue this using... Uh, I don't know, control alt delete No, that's not going to work either. So our system didn't live long enough for us to see the results of the test, but I doubt you need any confirmation. Our files are almost definitely encrypted, given that they were before, but now we have a lot more threats executing. So enforcing a network lockdown definitely affected Windows Defender more than it affected ransomware. It's interesting because ransomware also depends on command and control servers to get encryption keys sometimes, but they typically have some kind of redundancy built in so that even if the network is disabled, they will still be able to do some kind of encryption. And now we've got an audio message playing. Yeah, right. Thank you for the message. <laughs> now, this is something to consider, that ransomware has better redundancy than our security solutions. Maybe there's a lesson to be learned there. If ransomware developers are thinking about the possibility that what if a system does not have internet, we still want to be able to get to it, why are companies like Microsoft that have so much resources to put to problems like this not thinking about similar situations. Why is ransomware more robust than our security solutions? Of course, I'm sure that there are more challenges when it comes to building a detection engine than ransomware. I'm familiar with that, having done so myself, but I still think we should have more conversations along these lines and maybe think about it this way. But anyway, that pretty much signals the end of the test. I'm gonna quickly reset the system and we'll see what is the state of our files, but I doubt that it's going to be much of a surprise. The only thing to look at, I guess, is uh, which ransomware ended up with the final blow, and if Windows starts up at all. <laughs> okay, so this is a screen I've not seen in a while, Kryptonite, and uh, all our <laughs> taskbar icons are gone too. Wow, there are different layers of encryption going on here. <laughs> we've got PewCrypt, we've got another extension, we've got extension upon extension upon extension. So hey, this is what happens when Windows Defender is unable to access the network. I thought it was bad enough with the network turned on, but damn, this is quite something. We still have ransomware messages popping up as usual, but I think we've seen enough destruction for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and share it if you did. Also, for those of you that might mention this, I have nothing against Windows Defender. Part of the reason I make these videos is so that you can maybe figure out weaknesses like this, which will allow it to get better in the future. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. 
And keep in mind this time I even used the network attack vector, so it is a much more realistic attack scenario. This is Leo, and as always, thank you so much for watching, subscribe to the PC Security channel, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.